In 1894, Tsar Nicholas II took control of Russia. The Tsar was equivalent to the king of, in Russia, who had complete autocratic control over this vast empire. Russia had been undergoing a rapid industrialization, which was increased during the reign of Tsar Nicholas II. This rapid industrialization meant that peasants from Russia would leave for the city. This meant that cities were becoming crowded. In addition to this, workers would be given poor working conditions and poor pay. These workers began to become somewhat educated of the life of the West, who lived in luxury, where there was democracy, money, and good working conditions. Poverty was on the rise in Russia, and because of this, the Tsar began to lose support. Because of these poor com working conditions, led to the formation of various rival groups such as the Social Revolutionaries and the Social Democrats, the latter of which would split into the Mensheviks and Bolsheviks in 1903. Meanwhile, working conditions continued to worsen, and Russia's loss in the Russo-Japanese War certainly didn't help the support of the Tsar. On January 22nd, 1905, some workers began to protest in front of Winter Palace because of these poor working conditions. They were quickly met by soldiers who shot them down, leaving around 200 people dead. This brutality of the Tsarist regime led to the 1905 Russian Revolution, leading to strikes across Russia. This severely hurt the Russian economy, especially since they were on a rapid industrialization. This forced the Tsar's hand and he was forced to create both the August and October Manifesto, the latter of which the revolutionaries accepted. This allowed for a nominated Duma, similar to Parliament, and took some power away from the Tsar, as he was not allowed to make decisions without consulting the Duma first. While there were some groups who protested this, such as the cadets, who wanted to end Tsarist, Tsarism as a whole, there were other groups, such as the Octoberists, who found this as the perfect solution. The Tsar would allow this for two years, before creating the fundamental laws. This restored the Tsarist autocracy and allowed him to make decisions without consulting the Duma if they were not in session, whilst also allowing him to dismiss the Duma at any time. This enraged some members of the Duma, however, because the Tsar gained support by allowing the Duma in the first place, he had still maintained his power. In 1912, the Lena Goldfield massacre occurred, in which the Tsar allowed his soldiers to kill innocent peasants who began to, to strike, and this killed many of them. This ended the relative calm of seven years and allowed many people to revolt and strike. However, this was not for too long, as World War I began in 1914 with Russia at the forefront. Long story short, Russia began to lose critical battles, famine began in Russia, and many men in the military were peasants forced to fight, making them in inexperienced and not great in warfare. Tsar Nicholas II took charge of the army and went with them in early expeditions. However, this was mainly ceremonial and the Tsar had little influence over the war. However, because he took charge of the army, he was blamed for all their failures. Moreover, he left his wife and trusted advisor, Rasputin, to rule the empire instead. They were already disliked by the people, and this furthered tensions within Russia. This famine and terrible living conditions saw the Tsar blame, and the 1917 revolution, led by the cadets, Bolsheviks, Essars, and more, would depose the Tsar and begin their own Russia. The Tsar would later be killed along with the whole royal family. This is the story of the Russian Revolution.